Florida has the highest concentration of springs on earth. People from all over the world visit the Florida Springs and are mesmerized by their turquoise beauty. Florida Springs are nature's crystal clear freshwater pools. But where does all that water come from? Florida was under a shallow sea for millions of years. Over time, shells and corals were deposited on the bottom of the sea and form the sedimentary rock called limestone. This limestone bedrock is easily dissolved by acidic water, and that creates many tubes and channels for fresh water to flow and be stored underground in what is called an aquifer. The Floridan Aquifer covers 100,000 square miles and reaches from all of Florida over to southeast Alabama, southeast Georgia, and even up to southeast South Carolina. Florida is now a peninsula surrounded by water on three sides. As water evaporates from the ocean and from trees and plants on the land, it rises toward cooler air in the atmosphere and condenses to form clouds. When the rainwater falls, the CO2 in the air and plant acids in the soil cause the rain to become slightly acidic. As this water reaches the limestone bedrock, the acidic water dissolves the rock over time. This chemical erosion causes sinkholes, caves, and tubes to form. When water in the aquifer is high enough and there is a feature near the surface such as a collapsed cave, a spring is formed. In Florida, we have more springs than anywhere else in the world. We have more freshwater springs than anywhere else in the world. And they're vital because 98% of all our water comes from the springs. All the water that comes out of a spring is nothing but the rainfall which occurs within the watershed of that spring. So we can refer to that as a spring shed, but it is that area that drains from the surrounding areas into the, uh, into the spring itself. And because of that close connectivity between the spring uh, and, and the spring shed, anything we do in there, any type of pollution we put in there, goes to the spring very quickly. And one of the biggest challenges today is the, the nitrate uh, basically coming from fertilizer, coming from septic tanks, we're seeing that number increase dramatically in the springs throughout Florida where you have urbanization. In the springs that don't have urbanization, that are, that are rural, you don't see that in increase. So we see it as being directly tied to the development that's occurring within the spring shed. Our biggest challenge really is pollution, and that pollution is not necessarily just from the number of houses and people putting chemicals and things on their ground. One of the problems at Wakaiva here is that we have a pollution problem that's at least 150 years old. That this area used to be all agricultural, lots of citrus grown here. The farmers used to put the nitrates on the field and those nitrates are still trapped in the soil. It's still coming in and that's what's causing algae. Because there's very little filtration that occurs in karst, water travels very rapidly through that system. Uh, it ends up uh, with the groundwater being contaminated very quickly. So if you have a, 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 some type of a source, whether it be gasoline uh, um, or, or pesticides or herbicides, all those things that have been your drinking water very, very quickly. In fact, we're starting to find uh, uh, a lot of other chemicals in there, including uh, optical brighteners from soaps and detergents, uh, all sorts of medications uh, that pass right through the wastewater treatment plants, right through the septic tanks, and, and into the groundwater, and, and they are consumed. Uh, by us is that, is that cycle. We are directly competing with the spring for water. So every gallon of water we pull out of the ground to use for lawn irrigation or in our homes or for industry or for agriculture is a gallon that doesn't come out of the, of the spring itself. The whole of Florida floats on this bed of water and on either side of us we've got salt water and beneath us 3,000 feet down we've got sea water as well. And the problem is that it's all encroaching, so there's more seawater and less fresh water. Um, and it really is important because that's where we get all our drinking water from. And what is scary is that in the last 10 years, 17 springs have disappeared completely because water levels have dropped. The two things that I tell people that they can do to protect the spring is, number one, reduce the amount of water they're using. Uh, we understand there has to be a balance, that people aren't going to go away, they're going to be here in Florida, but we don't have to be one of the leaders in the world in the amount of water we use per day. We can use less water. The average person in Central Florida is using about 120 gallons of water per day, and 
in certain parts of the third world, they use two liters of water a day. So you can kind of see that, that variation there. So it's important that we learn to manage the water. And then we need to reduce the amount of pollution we put into it. We've got to get the septic tanks uh, out of the spring sheds, uh, ultimately connecting the sewer, providing higher treatment, uh, it's very, very important to do. And then we have got to reduce the amount of ammonium nitrate fertilizer we're using. Uh, we use far more fertilizer than uh, our grass could possibly ever need. Uh, you know, if a little bit works well, we want to put a whole lot more on. We need to cut that back. And the spring's an integral part of the diversity of this huge area. That if springs are affected, then everything downstream is affected as well. So, and we're all part of that chain. So if we damage that chain, we ultimately are going to suffer as well. The springs are a window to the aquifer. Florida springs are the largest by volume in the world and discharge 19 billion gallons of clean, clear flowing water per day at a constant temperature, which is essential for life both in the springs and the rivers they feed. These beautiful jewels have an intrinsic value that provide water, food, and habitat, as well as recreational opportunities. We can all do our part to protect our freshwater supply and our springs. Reduce the size of your lawn. 50% of water withdrawn from the aquifer for public supply is used to water residential lawns. Switch to Florida-friendly landscaping with native plants. This will reduce and even eliminate the need to water and fertilize your yard. Upgrade your septic system and connect to municipal waste treatment when you can. This significantly reduces algae growth and greatly improves water quality. Conserve water at home, work, and school. Install aerators on sinks, fix plumbing leaks, and upgrade showers and toilets to low water models. Don't let water run while brushing teeth, doing dishes, and shaving. Dispose of waste properly to prevent contaminants from entering into the spring shed. Spread the word about our treasured Florida springs. Visit a spring. Teach children and friends and family about the springs and how to protect them. Together, we can ensure a clean, clear future for Florida's springs. <laughs>